I would like to invite the children to come up and join me on the row of the steps, and everyone may be seated. Consecration Sunday today, and, and it ties in with a whole theme we've had this month. Um, I don't know how many, if everybody here is aware that, you know, we're focusing on the Holy Spirit for this whole year at St. John's, and each month we, uh, we highlight one of the fruits of the Spirit. There are nine sort of uh, qualities that the Holy Spirit produces in us if we allow the Holy Spirit to do that. And... Um, we started with love, and then last month we talked about joy. Do any of you know what our fruit of the Spirit is this month? That's going to come up. It's not this month. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Anybody? Anybody out there? Generosity. Generosity. Right. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Now, generosity is a word we use a lot, right? We say that person is really generous. What do you... What do you think of when you think of generosity? Kind? Nice? What makes somebody generous? Giving to those what you could have used for yourself instead. That's very good. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of ways to describe generosity. And I think those two readings we just heard, um, Tell us a little bit about that. St. Paul in that first reading, that was a long one, wasn't it? Thank you, Fiona. Um, have, says that first of all, generous, generosity is not giving because we have to. It's not giving out of guilt. It's not give, giving because someone said so. It's, it's freely done. And then it's also done with great joy. Because we might give, but we might say, oh, okay, here, take it. Well, that's not very generous, is it? Even though we gave. Um, and Paul uses that, he has that one uh, scripture verse that is very, very famous, uh, that God loves what? A cheerful giver. Yeah, rather than one a grudging giver, or an angry giver, a cheerful giver. So voluntary and, and, and joy are part of being generous. And then Jesus tells us that story about sitting at the treasury of the temple and um, watching people put their, their gifts in, which would make me a little nervous. I'm like, mind your own business. But anyway, he was watching. And there were a lot of rich people putting in large sums of money. And then this poor widow came. And you remember what she put in? Two little copper coins. Actually, I think they only equaled one cent. They were, they were very, very small. And then he said an amazing thing. He said she was more generous than all the others because they had given out of their great abundance and she had given everything she had. Everything. That's about as generous as you can get, isn't it? Now, today we're going to have opportunities to come up at the end of the service and make what we normally call pledges. Uh, of giving to the church. Um, and it's not just the adults. I know a number of our, our kids here have pledged for years. I started when I was 12, and I've done it every year since. That's a lot of years, isn't it? And, um, but we, so we wrestle because it wouldn't be responsible for us to give everything away, would it? Because a lot of us have responsibilities. Your parents have a responsibility to take care of you. And um, other people have different responsibilities. So we need to be true to those responsibilities um, and then ask ourselves, what portion are we willing joyfully to give back? And there are a number of models in our scriptures. There's the little, remember the story of the short man, Zacchaeus, who climbed the tree so he could see Jesus? And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I see you. Come on down here. I'm going to go over to your house and we're going to hang out. And he was so happy, he said, Lord, I, I know I've done a lot of bad things, but I'm going to give away half of everything I have to the poor. Well, that's a lot too, isn't it? Um, and not everybody can do that. 
In our Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, have often held up a 10% of everything that we have that we give in Thanksgiving. But even that is, is a quite a, a struggle for some people. So we all, we all wrestle with that. Um, but we remember that the two marks of generosity are joyfulness. What can we give joyfully? And what can we give that we feel? Because that was the thing about the widow. It made a real impact in her life. With the other people that gave those big gifts, oh, they didn't miss it. They had a lot more. They went out and spent it. And this goes against everything our culture teaches us, doesn't it? Our culture says, well, I want you to get more and more money. I want you to hold on to it. I want you to have these bank accounts of gold. That's what we're taught. Get, become a rock star or sports figure so you can get tons of money, right? But our Christian faith teaches us just the opposite. That what we're about in our Christian faith is mining, digging deep for a heart of gold. A heart of gold. Not bank accounts of gold. But a heart of gold is one that is joyous and sharing and that gives sacrificially to others. And um, as I was preparing for this, it made me want to give you all something. And I know I gave you last month, I gave you a little statue, remember that of St. Francis of the Wolf that reminds you that no matter how scary things get, God's there. Well, I want to give you something today. And it looks a lot like gold, but it actually is more, much more special than gold, at least in my humble opinion, because it's chocolate, <laughs> covered in gold. And a um, little bag of money. And these um, are for you to use however you want with your parents' permission after the service is over. <laughs> um, but I hope that it will remind you that it's not, we don't, we're, as Christians, we're not trying to get pockets of gold. It's candy. But we want hearts of gold. We want to live, and we want to give. And so, I would encourage you to think about what portion of these would you be willing to share with somebody else? Not each other, because you're all each going to get one. But maybe um, somebody else at the church, maybe at the brunch, you might see somebody that looks like they could use a, a chocolate <laughs> coin. Maybe somebody at home, a friend, or somebody you don't even know, a homeless person. But always do this with your parents. They will help you decide uh, what and how many. Could you share one? Could you share two? It's up to you. But this is a gift. May you always search, though, for your heart of gold.